My name is Jim Snell, and I am an executive director of Always Your PC. And I would like to introduce our morning keynote speaker, a very special leader and spokesperson for service. As Miss Tennessee volunteer, Gary Arnold will travel over 80,000 miles, speaking to over 70,000 school children about character education. Carrie serves as a Goodwill Ambassador for, five, for the five Children's Miracle Network hospitals across the state. She also holds a position as an official Friends of Monroe Carroll Jr. Children's Hospital of Vanderbilt Board Intern, and she serves as an Honorary Chair for Volunteer TC. As someone who was diagnosed with epilepsy at the age of five, Carrie has dedicated her life to raising epilepsy awareness. She created a movement for Carrie's Bill, which advocates for seizure protocols in state schools in the hopes of helping other epileptic children. A native of Holiday, Tennessee, if you don't know where that is, Carrie can tell you. Um, she is a junior at the University of Tennessee at Martin, where she majors in fashion, fashion merchandise. Uh, it is my pleasure to introduce Miss Tennessee Volunteer 2019, Carrie Harmon.
you are the face of your organization. You represent the contestants you compete with, your family, and the organization itself. There's only one Miss Tennessee volunteer, and it's my responsibility to do the best that I can in that job. One of the responsibilities that I have as Miss Tennessee volunteer is being the governor's spokesperson for character education. So what this means is I travel all across the state, I go to different schools, I talk to different groups, about a character trait that I thought was very important. And when I was getting ready to speak to schools this year, I really wanted to take a step back. I wanted to look at what I thought these kids needed to hear at this time. I have several educators in my family, and so I spoke with them. I would go visit their schools, take a look at their classes, and see what I thought these kids needed to hear. And I landed on caring, because there's so many things that fall in line with caring, including respect. When I was in the sixth grade, I was part of Fellowship Christian Athletes. And with that, we read a book called How Do You Feel About It Today? And that's what I based my entire sessions on, my, all of my speeches for these school children, is how do you feel about it today? So this book is all about the idea that we all have an imaginary bucket. And in that bucket, we have all of our good thoughts and feelings about ourselves. So you can either choose to be a bucket filler, which is a kind and a caring person, or a bucket dipper, which is like a bully. So you can choose to fill people's buckets with kind words, with kind actions, being a caring person, or you can dip from others. And that's one thing that I've tried to explain to these students is that it's really easy to get from people's buckets now. We're in an age where you can be a bully on the playground, or you can get your phone out, and you can be a bully on social media. But I want them to realize that it's also very easy to be a bucket filler. It's very easy to be kind. Something as little as opening the door for someone can change their whole day. Because you never know what someone else is going through. And I love to share that message with these kids and see that they are understanding it. When that light bulb goes off and they get it. And I received a few messages from parents sending pictures of their, their kids talking about because I give them homework. They groan and groan every time I say you have homework. Tell them they don't even know what it is. I could be telling them to go home and ask them. They don't know. But I tell them to go home and share it with their family to share that message that we talked about and to do it, to choose to do three kind things every day. Fill a bucket. Three things every day. It's easy. It'll become a habit. And I tell them that it's important that they choose to be the bucket filler because throughout your life, and it's something that I've dealt with, throughout your life you're always going to run into those people. You're going to run into either a bucket filler and a bucket dipper, and it's how you choose to handle those situations. It's how you choose to act. Last semester alone, I spoke to over 30 counties across the state. I've spoken to more than 20,000 students. And I find every time that the message is different. I tell everyone that technically you can file school visits under the same category. But it's always different. Every student is different. Every school is different. What they need to hear is different. And that's one of those things that I've gotten as I've gone to the school visits. I've talked to the principal, the vice principal, the guidance counselor, whoever it may be, and ask them specifically, what do they need to hear? What, what do I need to focus on for this group? So every time it's different. But to see the outcome is so incredibly rewarding because it's something that you can always count on. Being a bucket filler, when you show kindness to others, you fill their bucket, it makes them happy. And in return, it makes you feel good too. So this brings me to the topic of volunteering. I travel statewide, sometimes rushing from Nashville back to West Tennessee, from West Tennessee to Chattanooga, and back and forth. I've made the trek from Camden, which is West Tennessee, all the way to Johnson City in a 24-hour period. And I've found that there's never enough time in a day. There's never enough time to get everything done, and I'm sure most of you feel that way too. But my point is that the time we have is very limited. We have to choose how we spend our time and our resources. For me, my time this year in this role is one year. And I continually say that I have one opportunity to do this. I will not get the chance to be Miss Tennessee volunteer again. So I'm going to do everything I can. If anything you can throw at me, I want to do it because I have one opportunity. So I take what's important to me, which is the children of Tennessee, and I use my personal platform of the Make a Wish Foundation. I use that time to volunteer and to make a difference. As we finish here today, I'm 
getting in my car, I've packed it already, and I'm headed straight home to be part of Second Harvest Movement, which is something else that's very close to my heart, something I got involved in with in high school. And I realized that there's a lot of people within my own county who need help, who are hungry within my own town. So every second counts. You have to sit back, you have to pick a time, sit back, and realize that you have to seize those opportunities. What this title has, and is continually teaching me, is that people are always watching the problem. They're looking for that example that you're setting for them. In your work, in your personal interests, in your home, your family life, you have a chance to be an example by doing good work for others. One of those times that I've seen that I'm being watched is with my little cousin. She's been my mini me since the day she was born, and I realized that when she went to the Walmart with her mom, she said, Mom, I've got these glasses. So why do you have to have glasses? Because my best friend wears glasses. She wanted to wear glasses just because I was wearing glasses. And something as simple as that, if she's watching that I wear glasses, a certain kind of shoe that I wear, she's also watching how I interact in my community what I'm going out and spending my time on, what's important to me. So you all are also setting that example as well. While speaking to students, I like to remind them of that being a bucket filler is contagious. Right now I say, my example I use it is washing our hands. And sometimes we don't wash our hands, and people are going to get sick, it spreads. And being a bucket filler is the same thing. When you show kindness, when you show others that you care, it spreads. You make someone feel good. And volunteering is the same way when you show others what you're passionate about. It's going to spread. When you get others involved, when they feel that volunteer spirit, they're going to want to continue to do other things, to look at what they're passionate about and how they can volunteer and better the community in those ways. For me, this role has been an opportunity in a long time. Every time someone's asked me what it's been like, I haven't been able to put it in words. And I, I, still, I still can't. I don't think I ever will be able to, but it's been the opportunity of a lifetime for me. But there's still a lot of barriers to break down to get the message of serve out there. Because pageants are not always thought of as well as I think they should be. And the Buddha did wonders for that. <laughs> but I believe pageants do exactly what our last component of serve is, and that's empowering young women. Women who want to pursue a dream, who want to do well, to volunteer their time in their communities, they want to seek out opportunities to improve themselves and the world around them. When I began my personal journey with pageants, I could have never stood up here and spoken to all of you. It would have never been possible. I would have ran the opposite direction. I would have avoided. I used to think of myself as an introverted extrovert. Because I have to think about it when I say that. But I was a fairly outgoing person, but when it came to speaking, when it came to volunteering to answer questions in class, I was going to put my head down, I was going to sink down in my chair. I was not going to have any part of it because I was terrified. I was terrified of saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing. I've loved performing and singing my entire life, and I have two older sisters who I've been lucky enough to sing with. But I didn't sing alone until the last five years when I really got to doing pageants at a higher level because I was terrified. I liked having the comfort of my sisters there if I forgot the words, if I got nervous, you know, it was a comfort for me. But when I began competing in pageants, I got out of that shell. I got out of that box. My art teacher growing up said I had a box and I had to get out of it. I used to be in trouble all the time because I was like, tell me what you want me to do. But I got out of that box. I've been able to speak at events like this. I've been able to sing at sporting events and national anthem, sing at my church, which is something before now I've never been able to do by myself. And that's in my own community. It's empowered me to go out and do those things that I love and share them with more than just my small little family. And that's what these other girls are seeing as well. As I started speaking to different areas in the state and to other girls who are competing, I found these volunteer opportunities that I didn't know existed. Things that I'm going to be able to continue doing after I graduate and have my career. Things I'm going to be able to get my family and my friends in. I 
had no idea so many opportunities were out there. But through this program, I've been able to share what I'm passionate about. Others have been able to share their passions. And you all have that opportunity as well to go out in your community and share what you're passionate about and get others involved in serving. This year has been about setting an example for others and learning how to shuffle the responsibility. Because like I said, it's a big responsibility, but it's one that I take on every single day and I'm ready to go out and do it. I have my education, my family, school, friends, and I have to figure out that balance. And it's been the best learning experience because we all have things that we have to shoulder. We have our own stories, we have our own struggles, but we each have something we're passionate about. We just have to choose to go out and continue to be that example for our communities. You have the opportunity to help people like me who are ready to go on to the next chapter. That's one thing that I continue to think about every day. June, I'm out of a job. It's a little scary, but I'm moving on to the next chapter and because of this program, there have been so many doors open for me. Because of this program, I've seen opportunities, seen organizations, and things I can take part in after this year that I would never have the opportunity to do so. Within your communities, you have those people who are looking for that as well. They're looking for that next step, the next piece of their puzzle. So I encourage you to go out and find those people. Look into your community, look into your schools, and see who is looking for that opportunity to better themselves and better the community. Because that's one of the things that I can't speak enough about is so much growth happens when you get out and you get going, you get started into something you're passionate about. So I encourage you all to go find somebody this week, next week, find somebody new every week, and share what you're passionate about within your community. Because as you do so, your community's gonna grow. There's gonna be better opportunities within your community. So I encourage you all to do that, and I want to thank you all for having me today speak. I'm a quick speaker, I apologize. <laughs> but I encourage you all to do that, and I thank you all so much for having me. It's been such a wonderful experience to be an honorary chair on Volunteer at Tennessee Board. It goes perfect with the name Volunteer Tennessee, Tennessee Volunteer. It's a perfect little relationship. But thank you all so much for having me.